So let me ask right off the top, what is the alternative to refusing to forgive? Well, I, I, isn't it to carry around for a lifetime feelings of bitterness, resentment, even hatred? So why would we choose to do that to ourselves? It's been said that harboring resentments is like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Another has said that letting hatred simmer within us, eating at our emotions and our body, is like burning down our house to get rid of rats. C.S. Lewis once observed that he had finally forgiven a man who had been dead, get this, for more than 30 years. Can you imagine carrying around such negative feelings for 30 years? It certainly didn't affect that the one who laid in the ground did it. When we carry anger and resentment towards someone else, we only hurt ourselves. Philip Yancey writes this, Not to forgive imprisons me in the past and locks out all potential for change. An immigrant rabbi once made an astonishing statement. He said, before coming to America, I had to forgive Adolf Hitler. He said, I did not want to bring Hitler inside me to my new country. We forgive not merely to fulfill some higher law of morality. We do it for ourselves. As Lewis Meads points out, the first and only, often the only person to be healed by forgiveness is the one who does the forgiving. This is to say that forgiveness is one of the best gifts we can give ourselves. And I fear sometimes that we regard forgiveness as something we do for God or something to do because it's a nice thing to do. It's true, of course. We are commanded. We are commanded by God to forgive. But forgiveness is ultimately a gift we give ourselves. So how do we forgive? Oftentimes I I get that question. Well, first we have to acknowledge we've been hurt. The starting point for forgiveness is to admit that You've really been hurt. You're feeling a lot of pain. And we all know there are many incidents in life that are, that cause us to, to need forgiveness in that equation. There's a lot of things that don't need forgiveness. Things like minor disappointments or passing slights. We shouldn't even have to worry about forgiveness in those instances. We should just be letting those things roll off us, right? But situations that require forgiveness are ones where the pain inflicted is very personal, often unfair and deep. Things like betrayal and brutality, whether it's physical or emotional, those are the kind of things that come to mind. And as we hurt, we're likely to find that... the what comes next is there's a little bit of hatred in our heart. Now, we all know hatred is never a good thing. And we must be careful that we don't try to get rid of it by covering it up, by not acknowledging it. When we find hate in our heart, it's simply a sign. It's something that gives us information. It's telling us we need to forgive. The next step is surrendering our right to get even. I want to share one of my favorite illustrations. There was a patrolman who rode a motorcycle. He was in an accident. It was a minor accident, but it put him in the hospital for a couple of days. Now, his injuries had been to his foot and his ankle. And I guess they had to put him out for something, a procedure they were doing. But when he woke up, He was feeling something on his chest. He could feel there was this this area with a large Band-Aid on his chest. So with some effort, you know, those hospital gowns. He's like pulling, trying to look, and he sees, yeah, there's this huge bandage on his chest. And when he gets it further down, he saw that it was the kind of bandage that would be really painful to tear off a hairy chest. 
And on the bandage was written a message. It said a gift from the nurse you gave a ticket to last week. (laughs) Now that's what I call revenge, right? And, And I'm giving you that illustration because I'm not giving you permission to do something like that. We're not supposed to do that. When we choose, and we make a choice, we choose to forgive, we choose also to lay aside our right to extract revenge. In the moment of making that decision to forgive, we're doing two things. We are leaving ultimate justice and vengeance to God. You may remember a couple weeks ago our scripture said, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Right? So we're leaving that up to God. And number two, we're deliberately choosing the path of forgiveness. Acknowledging that we've been hurt is just a beginning. But surrendering our right to get even is the first step. The first step toward forgiveness. Now, the good news is we don't have to carry around feelings of bitterness, resentment. And anger. We don't have to carry, that just weighs us down. We can choose to forgive. The damage that we do to ourselves through unresolved anger and resentment is far more deadly than any damage we are likely to inflict on someone who has hurt us. We've all read those articles, right? We've seen the studies. It's a physiological fact that people that carry around resentment and anger and, and are stressed out by by this kind of thing, end up with ulcers and heart attacks and headaches, even skin rashes and asthma, believe it or not, and sometimes death. It just slowly debilitates us. So I'd like to ask, what is our motivation for doing such a difficult thing, for offering forgiveness? Why do we do it? Again, as our text points out, we are doing for them what God has already done for us. God forgives us again and again and again and again. I am living proof of that. I can't tell you how many times God has forgiven me. Sometimes for making the same mistakes over and over again. But the good news is there is absolutely nothing that God will not forgive. So I wondered, I I was thinking about this verse and I thought, I'd like to know exactly what a talent represents. You know, this term about talents and all that. So I looked it up. According to Wikipedia, the talent was the equivalent in weight to 100 denarii. Now, a talent would have been approximately equal to what a laborer would have earned over the time of nine years. Nine years. So, 10,000 talents, let's do the math, represents 90,000 years of wages. That's how much that man owed. And if you do the math, it, it works out to one million denarii. One million. This is the amount this man was just forgiven. One million denarii. And then he in turn had a man thrown into prison who owed him a hundred denarii. That puts it in perspective, doesn't it? It's pretty harsh, I think. Huh? How could someone have been forgiven that much turn around and be that unforgiving to someone else? Now, the king in today's story, we all know that's God, right? Here I forgave your debt. I've forgiven your debt, he exclaims. Should you not have forgiven the debt that was owed to you? He asks us the same question today. The same question. I've forgiven you. Can't you forgive? Jesus says, forgive us our debts when he taught us to pray as we forgive our debtors. You know, this is a hard teaching sometimes. It comes hard. Sometimes our hurt can go so deep, we feel we can, just can never let go of it. 
but we can and we must for our well-being. So with much prayer and a lot of help from God, I'm here to witness that we can forgive just as we have been forgiven. In today's passage, Peter says, how many times, you know, he's always got to ask those questions. How many times do I have to forgive? And Jesus replies, 77 times 7 or whatever. What he's really saying is, you need to forgive as many times as it takes. It's not about being wronged 77 times and forgiving each one of those times. What I think Jesus is talking about is, there's so some wounds that are so deep. You know what I'm talking about. They're so deep it seems impossible to forgive. Maybe we will need to forgive over 77 times before it finally takes hold and we can really let go of our hurt and really forgive. I don't know about any of you, but I've had those times when I thought, sure, I've forgiven. I know I've forgiven. And all of a sudden, it could be years later, all of a sudden this whatever negativity wells up in you and you realize it's still there. It's still there. So what's our choice? Again, help me, Lord. Help me to forgive yet again. And you do that over and over. As many times as it takes, as as long as it takes, whether it takes six months or 12 years or 50 years, that's what you do. We, do, we forgive as many times as it takes to truly let go of that hurt and really forgive. When the books of the, a certain Scottish doctor were examined after his death, it was found that on a number of accounts he had written through them and then added a note. And the note said, forgiven, too poor to pay. Now, after he died years later, the physician's wife decided that these accounts should really be paid in full, and she pursued it to sue for money. So she got to the court, and the judge asked her one question. He said, is this your husband's handwriting? And she replied, yes, it was. And his response was, there is no court in the land that can obtain a debt once the word forgiven has been written. The debt is gone. That is the good news that the gospel of Jesus Christ offers each one of us this morning. God's attitude is, I'll forgive, and I'm going to forget too. You see, it's not that I'll forgive, but I never forget. That's not the way God works. The way God works is forgiven, forgotten, forever. Across our debt has been written the words, forgiven, too poor to pay. The good news is once a debt has been forgiven, no one can collect on it. God wipes it out of God's mind. Oh, if only we could do that, huh? We can. We can forgive others like that. And you know what? We can forgive ourselves like that too. This this works for us as well. If God can forgive us, we can forgive us. Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious and merciful God, each one of us here today struggles to do what is right. But we admit we find it hard. Especially when it comes to how other people have hurt us or hurt those whom we love. So today... Today, Lord Jesus, we are asking for a breakthrough in this area. Right now, bring to mind any old resentments we may have, something that we haven't truly let go of or totally forgiven. Show us the old wounds that haunt us and help us to forgive them and those involved. And as you forgive us through the blood of Jesus Christ, we ask you to forgive them and make them and us whole again. Lord, we ask you to reach, if need be, beyond the grave.
For you are Lord of both the living and the dead. And we ask that this would be so. Because we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.